Farm, located here in the townland of Port Glorium. Kilcock in North Kildare was the venue for this special corn cutting harvest festival. The day itself, although a little overcast, didn't manage to hold out to a good warm working temperature and dry prevailing wind, which provided the ideal opportunity for this working activity. The farm itself, comprising in the region of 200 acres of prime arable land and rolling fields, 75 of these which are under corn. What made this day special was the fact that a few acres of the cordon had been allocated to be cut by a reaper and binder drawn by a team of horses. A good crowd of neighbours did manage to show up from the local catchment area and were all too willing to give a helping hand when it came to the hand stacking and stuck making. What made Come on, you're in. You can't count. You can't count. Looks good. These reapers started to appear in the cornfield after the turn of the 1900s and were generally owned and operated by the large landed estates. After the Civil War, the smaller farms began to grow in size and these machines started to grow in numbers and made harvesting life much easier for the farmer in general. The neighbours also usually gathered in to lend a helping hand to the stuck making and stacking. And this old Gaelic term became known as the mehel, which is an Irish word meaning a crowd. And this process continued on through the 19th century until modern day mechanisation arrived. the afternoon and the corn cutting was in full swing. The hard laborious work was also beginning to take its toll on the appetite. So we all took a well deserved break to sample some delicious pork and bacon sandwiches being made here from the thing on the spit and hopefully to have a few words with the owner himself, Alan Moody. I take it you're Alan. I am indeed, Kevin. Well, a very special day here today indeed. 
Yes, indeed it is. And uh, so the God is looking down at us. The sun is shining. Nice crowd. Nice crop. And Godfrey and his horse is looking well and machinery flying. And sure, what more could anyone want? Well, great for a binder is a special treat here today. It is indeed, Kevin. And it's, um, as I said, the real reason for it is to, is to produce some thatching straw for use down in the Clock Jordan community farm. Um, but again, judging by the crowd that's here, they're so delighted to see it and it's novel to them. I hope that it's able to stimulate the interest of the next generation in keeping up the traditions of yesteryear. Yeah, I've noticed uh, it's, it's becoming a great thing to touch these old houses from the Land League days. Yes, indeed. There's still a few of them hanging around. There are, and they're a joy to watch, there's no doubt about it. But some of them are really, really special. Um, I was just talking about one one down below there in near our coffee. And um, every time I pass by it, I'm just amazed at this craftsmanship that's gone into, the, in, into doing it. Well, I have to say your catering facility leaves nothing to be desired here today. No, it was an idea of my sister's. Why don't we do a pig in the spit and we uh, do baps and that sort of thing. And we have other stuff uh, for the younger children if they wanted it. And it's all disappearing very rapidly, so everyone must be happy. Well, indeed, it's great. And it's great to talk to yourself. And it's great to see the crowd of people and neighbours, of course, coming in to give a hand. And uh, we'll probably talk to you again down the road. OK, Kevin. Thank you very much. Harvesting the corn by reaper and binder provided two purposes to this field day. To recreate the cultural practices of old Ireland from times long gone past. And also to provide straw for the thatching of the remaining few thatched cottages left over from the land league days. Since the arrival of the Normans, corn has always been grown here and will continue to do so for centuries to come. And when we're sitting at our breakfast tables, enjoying our porridge, oat and bread, wheat and bread or cereal, or when we go to the local pub at night time to enjoy a few beers, stout or whiskies, it would be justified to spare a few thoughts for the grey and fanny community throughout the globe who make all this possible. The Lunasa Festival was in full swing when a few of the neighbours arrived into the field carrying a reaping hook and a sickle. This was a special treat for the people, as it was anonymous of the cottier's way of life during famine times. Last, of course, but not least, to spare a few moments of thought for all of our immigrants, most whom are long since deceased, and who worked these corn fields for centuries under the old cottiers and labourers' laws, to put a few lines of the Harvest Day song just for the memory. As I walked the streets of London, the sky so dark and grey, reflecting on old memories, my mind is drifting away, to cross that deep blue ocean and down the old roadway, just to hear again that trashing mill on an Irish harvest day. <laughs>